Hey, everybody. All right, Adam's working on Idle Ascendance. The goal is to get ready for the... Get ready to launch the prototype on Friday the 5th, right? So that we can figure out if it's fun. Nice. Okay, so hi, everyone. In that little break... Actually, wait a second. I'll check something really fast. Yeah, okay, make sure I don't have Venmo information up or anything. Pretty important not to do that. <laughs> okay, so in that little break, I did figure out the problem from earlier. So this is something... I, the problem was this. I couldn't click this character down here, but I could click anywhere else in this box. And the reason why <laughs> is because this control is meant to be a placeholder for where that sprite goes, and it's set to block input. So yeah, I just need to say ignore input, and that's it, we should be done. And then we can put this back down here. Actually, you know what? We could make that control be the thing that has the input. Does it have like a clicked thing on it? it has GUI input. Yeah, that's pretty much what we want. Um, You know what? That's probably easier to do. Yeah, I think we should just do that then. So I guess delete this entirely and just put it on this thing. We'll say like sprite placeholder. Kind of a weird way of doing things. And then we need to take in GUI event instead. Do I ever do that? I don't ever do that. What's it called? GUI input, not GUI event. GUI input. Don't want an inline chat session. All right, this looks good. Let's copy paste this. So we delete all of that stuff. And then we put this into here in quick character, whatever, what I call this quick character, quick info. Sounds good. Paste a All right. Now that is slightly different. It's HBox container slash Sprite placeholder. HBox container slash Sprite placeholder as control connect on GUI input and that's yeah, pretty much the same thing as we see here we just need to delete this now okay now how do we say that this is selected well we have an overworld character so I guess we can just go figure out if that has something that says that it's selected uh it's, there's no emit selected I guess we could call its emit, which is kind of weird. And then just pass in the overworld character. All right, that might work. Let's go try that. Too few arguments for connect. Expected at least two. Oh, here. Oh, yeah, I never said what we're connecting. GUI input. I must have accidentally deleted something. And now clicking this should select the character. It probably works, but there's no way to know unless we have two characters. So now we selected that one. We click this one. No, it does not work. I wonder if it's even doing anything. How often do I clean my keyboard? Not too often. Yeah. Although this one is pretty easy to clean because once you take off the keycaps, it's just a flat surface. But yeah, not too often. Uh, what's going wrong here? Mouse button left. All right, let's just say print clicky. <laughs> let's see if it's at least working. Is it? I know there's no collider on it, but it shouldn't need one. It's not working. Hmm. Oh, did I not make this like clickable? I think I set it to ignore. <laughs> yeah, I did. <laughs> okay, yeah. So what's the default of this? Stop. I, I don't know. Is that right? Yeah, now it's working. Yeah, cool. Okay, so you can see the faint outline behind here. And if I click this, you can see the outline there. Um, it's working. It's a little funky and it's hard to see with all the visible collision shapes. So let's make it a little bit better. So like, let's say we move this character out of here and give ourselves a necromancer and a mage. So now if we click one of these things, we're selecting the one above. So that's what I wanted to have happen here. And now that is working. So let's go check that in. Yeah, these are things that I think will make it a little easier to play the game. And I think there's some amount of this that we have to do. 
some things can be harder in the prototype and it's just not a big deal but like yeah uh, other things i don't know selecting your character should not be something that's difficult i guess allow for selecting your character i'll say allow another way for selecting your character yeah cool okay hey manatic mind all right so let's sync those changes so that one is done let's move on show in the quick info ui which character is selected by adding an outline uh, is this something character sprite knows how to do yeah it is okay so we can just say set outline with shader you missed the morning stream well, i wrote it all down in the april fools command already but it was a lot of fun <laughs> You'll still get to see the jump royale changes, so you don't need to watch the clip if you want that to be a surprise, because we'll play that in an hour. But yeah, the other two things happened earlier. All right, yeah, show which one's selected. So quick info should have a like is character selected. This needs to re this needs to hmm, this needs to connect to the signal that gets emitted, and we already have a signal that gets emitted. So dot selected dot connect. We need to do the same thing for the quick info thing. Where's the quick info? Quick info, there it is. But I want to connect to every overworld character we have, I guess. So we put this here. Get the quick info, quick info dot selected. Oh wait, no, no, wait, what? On player character selected. No, I guess we just can go update the, update this from over here. Yeah. Select character. Character set selected. I mean, I guess the same thing just happens over here, right? Character dot set selected. Character, there we go. All right, so now we need this to exist over here. Um, what are we doing with this? We're setting a sprite. Yeah, okay, so something like this is probably fine. We don't care about this thing. We just care about which one. Actually, this would work fine, right? Set selected character, overworld character. I guess set is selected. I don't know. Yeah, fine. Set is selected. This is kind of weird. Uh, and then we just need to see if this is equal to the child's um, overworld character. Yeah. All right. Now we go write that function, which should be very simple. Is selected bool. Yep. And then we get to the character sprite that we added. Where is that? Uh, what? Here, character sprite. There it is. Get the character sprite. Sprite equals this, right? No, it's added to the sprite parent. All right, well, we're getting there. <laughs> and then call whatever that function was in character sprite, which I don't remember. Character sprite. It was sat align with shader. Yeah. Okay, so does that work? How are we doing here? So now this is glowing green down here. If we get another character, it's glowing green. If we click the first one. Yeah, so nice. Now you can tell very readily that you have selected the correct thing. Yeah, good. And you can also click them up here to do the exact same thing. I think it's good. I don't think this should go all the way to black here. Because I think it's less obvious that it's being selected when you do that. And so that's a change we'll just make super quickly. Yeah, this. We'll just say if C is less than... Oh, whoops. This side. C is less than 0 0.25. Then C equals 0 0.25. Yep. All right. Now it shouldn't go all the way to black. It should go just to a darker green. Is that working? I don't even know if that's working. 
Well, let's test it by setting it to something very obvious. Yeah, it's, that's, it's working. I just, apparently 0.25 is not a good value here. Maybe like 0.33. No, still looks kind of bad. Maybe 0.5. Ah, that's much better. Okay, now it's going from bright green to like dark green, and it's not going to black. Yeah. All right, I like that. Show character selection in quick info. I, I'm not even going to write the other part that I did there. I just don't think it's worth writing these things down. Normally I would, not now. Looks good, looks good, looks good. Cool, yeah, commit. Can we add the bouncing around the screen? <laughs> Do you mean add that into this game or add it into Jump Royale permanently? Either way, the answer would be a no, but adding it to Jump Royale permanently, we could add something that's like not quite as extreme. Yeah, this game, yeah would be fun clicking skills button when it's already open should close it okay let's go figure out where that happens slimes bounce when hit that would make sense but no other characters uh quick character info here so there should be a skills button yeah on skills button press this emits over to something else why does that keep happening huh i wonder what i'm pressing to do that I did not mean to press that button. All right, so we emit that to where? Here. Yep, here it is. Set associated character. So if it was already the associated character, then hide it, I guess. If skill tree, what is going on? Associated character, character data is not equal to null. So if skill tree dot character data equals character dot character data, primary character data, and it's visible, then hide it. Yeah. So if the skill tree is already showing for that character, ah, I think it's fine. <clears throat> oh, is there two M's in primary? Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, the running it with modifiers, I, I think there could be some of those that are fun. Yeah, I think Dark Darkstorm's already working on kind of changing the game a bit to make it a, almost like a totally different game. Okay, so what did I just do? I made it so that if you click this button while this is already open, it closes it. Yeah, hey, Antonio. So it shouldn't do that. If we click close over here, it should still open over here. Good. And if I click this one, it should open to that character. Yeah. Cool. All right. That's working. All right, Antonio, I am going to uh, ping you with this message here. <laughs> Try not to send so many short messages. But welcome to the stream. <laughs> totally fine with you staying. I just have a couple of rules to follow, and that's one of them. All right, so this one's done, which is hide the skill tree when you click the button a second time. Hide skill tree when clicking the button again. Does that fit in 50 characters? Just barely. Commit and yes. Cool. So that one's done. All right, quick info UI is what should have an unlock new character button at some time. Yeah, this is true, but I don't think this is something I'm going to do right now. So let's cut this from here. And I... Where do we even write this? Ah, here it is. There we go. How do static variables work? Static variables are accessible with just a reference to the class and not a reference to an instance of a class. So if you think about it, you might have like a cat class and then instances uh, might be something like you know, Garfield or I don't know, normal. <laughs> um, so a static variable is something you can access through cat. So for example, maybe it's like cat dot, you know, default number of legs. Oh, default number of lives. That's pretty funny. <laughs> yeah. 
And then, you know, maybe you have an instance of a cat which could have like lives remaining and you could have this be a different number. Anyway, that's the quick explanation of static. All right, so get rid of that. I don't care about that. Uh, show in the skill tree which character is selected. Easiest way is just putting the skills thing at the top. Yeah, I think let's just go with the easiest way. I think it's fine for right now. So skill tree. Um, I know this is not great layout or anything. I feel like it should be up here somewhere. So let's bump this to the side. Let's bump this to the side. Let's add a new label saying who this is for. So we'll call this, what do we call this? Uh, character class label, I don't know. Yeah, there. <laughs> no, there's more than one of the same cat. Oh, I guess he said of a cat, yeah. Two Garfields. <laughs> They should remake the Matrix, but Garfield is the cat that they pass by twice and no other changes. <laughs> you have to watch the entire series just to enjoy that one little change. Okay, I think this will be fine. I think we just need to update this now. So this will be whenever you set an associated character in the skill tree. So right here, we'll just set that labels text. It is inside this, yep as label.text equals so what did i say this should be easiest way is just warrior skills mage skills etc yeah character class plus skills actually not even really skills it's like abilities abilities yeah let's see what that looks like <laughs> you know anyway i can learn gd script yeah so they have a really good tutorial if you just go to this. Yeah, I think read this page and like understand the basics of GD script and then try things out. It's it's really as simple as that. I think GD script is meant to be a nice way of getting into Godot. So, you know, like here's a really, really simple way you could do something like this. I could just go to scene, make a new scene in Godot. And then every Godot project has this icon by default and just drag it onto here. And then you can attach a script and I could just save this as delete me for now. And then that's it. You'll get some functions and you could just do something like X plus equal one here or position dot X, excuse me, plus equal one. And that's it. I go play this scene, which is probably going to make me save. So I guess I also say this is delete me. And because I have types being enforced here, I need to do this, but you wouldn't need to do this. Okay, there we go. And then actually run the scene I meant to run, which is this one. Uh, yeah, so this is done with essentially like one line of code, right? I made a, I made a, a character move. We just put position.x plus equal one. So if you set up a project like this, then there, now you can do whatever you want. You can say like, what happens if I do this multiple times and you'll see the sprite move faster. What happens if I modify the Y value as well? And you'll see it get updated there too. And I guess I had to change all these to minuses at this point. Um, and then this to a plus again there. Now you should eventually see it on the screen. There we go. So yeah, just mess around with those sorts of things. It's real time. It gets updates as you modify the scripts here, but just try it out. I mean, that's the kind of thing. If you just set up, you'll, you'll learn yourself and you'll see how it goes. So I got to go delete that stuff that I just added. Delete me. What is going on? Why can't I delete this? There we go. Remove and remove. Do you know how I can make my variable not reset when switching off and back onto a scene? You're probably either freeing the scene and then adding it back, in which case it's reinitializing itself. Well, that's almost certainly what you're doing. Or there's a function you're calling that you don't expect to be calling. But those are the kinds of things like try to debug it yourself and figure out what's going wrong. If I go to my Godot notes here, for example, which I just uploaded yesterday, there should be something in here about debugging. Yeah, to debug GDScript, follow these instructions. So like, here are my notes. If you want to check them out, um, definitely just debug. You'll figure out what's happening. 
Garfield went past us and then I saw another that just looked just like it. How similar? How much like him? Was it the exact same Garfield? Was John Arbuckle calling for him? All right, so what we were testing right before that was whether the class name looks good in here. So let's just pop this open. Warrior abilities. Yeah. And so we really should test this with the longest name one. Yeah, Necromancer abilities. And when I click a different one, yeah, it selects different ones. The ideal way of doing this would be to show a sprite in here or something. And since we know that we can get away with this now, let's go make the automation button move to the side a little bit. That way it looks a little less dumb. There. Cool. Oh, wait, what's that? What's that? What is this? Child is character quick info. Oh, darn it. We need to do this. Unsafe property, not present on the inferred type node. Overworld care. Oh, we need this for everything. Ugh. Character quick info. We don't need this part. And then we just put this in there twice. Delete those things. All right, that fixes that problem. Did it fix the other one too? Method is not present. That was fixed. Let's just refresh this. Did we do it? I think we did it. Yeah, let's, let's check that stuff in too. Okay, so that looks good. This is just fixing a type issue and this is moving some text around. So add label in skill tree to denote character. And then the other one was fix Godot warning. Done with that. Okay, show a highlight on the skills button in quick info when you have an available skill point. I don't know the best way of doing this, but all I wanna do here is make it so, where is that? Yeah, this skills button. I just wanna make it so that this is obvious that you have skills. I think the easiest way to do it is just to color the button differently. So we can just set a style override for normal of a new color and the color can be like a dark green maybe. Yeah, that's all we really have to do, I guess. All right, so it's style box flat. That's what we gotta go do. So let's start by making character quick info. Let's start by just coloring the skill button no matter what. Where do we get the skill button? There it is. Okay, so this should go in ready for now. So there's the skills button, skills button dot, what, theme overrides or something? Override, oh, what's it called? GD script override theme. Add theme color override. Really? <laughs> oh man, okay. So we do something like this. All right now, what's this called? Styles normal. Can I just hover over this? Theme override styles slash normal. Theme. Maybe I can just literally write normal here. Let's just try that. And see what happens. So now we revert this, and we should have that be a different color. Nope. <laughs> right click and copy property path. Oh, do I need to actually put this whole thing into here? I don't know if this is considered a color. No, that still doesn't work. I, it might not be theme color override. It might be some other theme style override or something. Let's find out where this comes from. Yeah, there's theme constant, theme font, theme icon, style box. It might be a style box. Ugh. Ugh. Also, I didn't know there were borders on these things. Theme override styles. <laughs> I have no idea what this is. Let's go up to the list up here. Theme style box remove has. I would guess it's this. Because I think these are called style boxes, right? Yes, they are. All right, so then it's probably got to be this. 
<sighs> Which means it's going to be more annoying to do. So we got to do something like this, I guess. So delete, delete this one. New style box. All right, now what's the problem here? Has no static type. That's fine. It doesn't know what this is. What is this? A style box? Flat? Hey, we did it. <laughs> okay, now it is not present on the inferred type node. Problem solved. So now we should have something colorful or different at least. Yeah, look at that. We added a tiny green line at the top. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Lana. <laughs> Welcome in. Raiders, you missed something very interesting this morning, which I guess it's not all that interesting to tell you about after the fact, but all my April Fool's stuff, I, I try to do something interesting on April Fool's every year, and they're all in this document, and this morning, we played a game that only had losing moves, and there was a $5 prize, and we also did a book reading, and so now we're getting ready for launching this prototype on Friday. So I am just kind of, well, I guess I'm going to be doing a lot, but I'm kind of working on some balance stuff right now. Uh, this game is called Idle Ascendance. I have been trying to rapidly prototype it. We started it two weeks ago. And the way it starts out is you get a character, you move it around, you get into turn-based battles, and then you get to the point where you're automating your character. So we just put points in this automation skill, and now the character is taking moves on its own from here on out. And then you'll eventually unlock more characters and, you know, you automate these characters too. And they all have the different skills that you can put points into. And for right now, since it's a prototype, there's a lot of stuff missing. You know, you can just walk through the walls here. But yeah, eventually they'll have many different characters fighting. So I want to get this game ready for Friday. And the goal of that is to figure out, is the game fun? So people might play this and say, this sucks. I would never want to play this again. In which case, we just don't make it. So then that's it. We late, we lost two and a half weeks instead of losing, you know, months and months of time to find out that it wasn't fun. So yeah, welcome on in everybody. Hope you had fun in Lana's stream. And I hope you have fun here too. <laughs> and so the thing we're working on right now is coloring this skills button just a little bit differently to indicate that you have new skills. So that's what I wanted to do here. I think we can just set the background color is there just a color here background color or something there it is background color okay so what if we set this to some kind of green 0.751 or 0.9 i don't know what the default color even is background color is not present oh come on i never know what's on any of these things it's bg color bg what programming language is this is gd script it looks sort of like Python, and it was probably heavily inspired by Python. Yeah, nice. Okay, so something like this is what we want here, and probably no border. I don't really care about that. Yeah, there we go. And then maybe we just darken this a little bit. Has constants as well. Yeah, something like a dark green would probably be good. Color dot. Oh, nice. We have a bunch of stuff. <laughs> the question is, what is the best green? There's like a million of these. And my pathetic human brain only knows green. I mean, I guess I was saying, let's try dark green. So let's see what that looks like. If we did this inside a process, we'd see it update in real time. Um, That's not bad. I think I want it a little bit darker, maybe. At this point, I should probably just make my own green. Dark olive green. Dark sea green. <laughs> what? They're just making up colors at this point. Yeah, let's just go with dark green for now. They use this X11 color names. Problem is I'm not even totally sure what color green I want. That's probably why just tweaking the values would be better. It's good to know about this though. I, I do appreciate it, Dan. Uh, okay, so now we are doing this no matter what. We want to do it conditionally when you have new skill points. So something needs to tell this thing that you have new skill points. I'm not sure. There's somewhere I kind of cheated the system a little bit. Yeah, I was here in process. Okay, we're just going to do that too then. So how do you set this or not set this? Is there some like new... Oh, wait. Oh, I remember. Uh, there was a remove 
theme style box here. Yeah. All right, so we could keep track of the style box that we create. Oh, it's a little weird to do this. Like highlight style box. This is going to be a style box flat. We're going to make this here. Highlight style box. Then we're going to set this or unset this. Why did it need to duplicate this? Can't I just make a new one? Flat dot new. Huh, yeah. All right, I think that should do it. Why is this a problem? Expected end of statement found colon instead. Oh yeah, this is needed. All right, next in process, we're just gonna either set or remove this based on whether you have skill points. So for now, I guess let's always set it. And I wonder what happens if you call add a bunch of times. Like, is this, is this producing a ton of these things? What does the comment for this say? Creates a local override. Override can be removed. Yeah. Has <laughs> to make it real. <laughs> <laughs> I very much appreciate this, Zenith. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for enriching all of our lives. <laughs> the The joke from earlier for the Raiders who came in, I said, what if there was an April Fool's Matrix where the only change is that this one seed of the Matrix had Garfield in it instead of the regular cat? <laughs> I love it. And so how do we tell if you have skill points in here? We can check your character data. Yeah. So if character data dot available skill points is greater than zero, then we do this. Otherwise, we do this. Remove. And then I think it should just work, hopefully. Too many arguments. All right, so we don't have a skill point. I'm going to force level up my character. And yeah, unfortunately, it also changed something else about this. I don't know what that was. Like this button is large, and then we press the level up button and it shrinks. So I guess we do need to duplicate the existing thing and then just change the background color. I mean, that's not hard to do. And that's actually what they had there originally. So fine, let's do that. Copy this, get the skill button, and then put this here. All right, now it shouldn't change size. Yeah, nice, it doesn't change size. I'm gonna revert Garfield in the red dress. <laughs> Every time you rewatch The Matrix, another character gets replaced by Garfield. Until the end of the movie is just Mr. Arbuckle. <laughs> Why do you persist? <sighs> All right, I, I think this is good enough for now, at least for a prototype, it's fine. I do just want to write some notes on this though. So let's go to Godot engine and then UI. Yeah, coloring button backgrounds. To do this through GD script. This through GD script is just this reference link. There we go. Yeah, looks looks fine. This is a style box flat. I want at least some of the code that I had there, yeah. And everything else probably looks fine, yeah. Well, I guess we should write the BG color thing in here. I'll just copy paste this. I mean, being able to change the border and whatever else is pretty straightforward. All right, button add and button remove. Can remove the style box override. Cool. Does it go back when you, yeah, that's a good question. It should, but we didn't test that. All right, so we click this, we level it up, it turns green, we put the point in, and it goes back to normal, yeah. 
Yeah, cool. Okay. I think we're done with that. Yep. So color skills button when you have points. Well, technically buttons. Oh, and then one other thing, I think I tested this, but I don't know for sure. What if only one button is enabled? So we add the necromancer, we level them both up, we put a point in here. Yeah, good. Looks like it's working. Backgrounds make them look more like a game. Yeah. Yeah, you know, there's kind of an argument when you're making games of how early do you end up adding non placeholder assets or something that looks close enough to the final game. And it differs for every game, but I think people probably have a hard time envisioning what a game would look like if you have too much placeholder art and that can impact the fun of the game. <laughs> when I put this lasagna in my mouth, I know it doesn't exist. Yet the Matrix convinced me that it is juicy and delicious. <laughs> <laughs> It was on some like wacky crossover fan fiction. Oh yeah, I also added zooming in. This took forever and now I can finally explain why it took forever and I am almost ashamed to say why it took so long. In the camera code right here. No, that's not right. Right here. Yeah. I was checking only if there was an event with wheel up or wheel down. I wasn't checking if you pressed the wheel up or wheel down. So it was triggering twice for every single wheel action. And the reason why this is really tough is because the scroll wheel is a special case. If you press the A key down on your keyboard, you have an A press followed by an A release. And that's how you know that you press the key. When you With the scroll wheel, there is no such thing as pressing the scroll wheel up or down. You, you tilt it and then that's it. That action is both of those things at once. It's a press and a release essentially. So if there were a concept of pressing your scroll wheel up, you can press it in, by the way, I know that's a button press, but if there were a concept of pressing it up, then I would have realized, oh, this works when I delay releasing the scroll wheel, but that's, it's not a thing. So it took me a long time to figure this out. And the code itself is just so straightforward. It's this, and ugh, it just took so long for me to figure this out. By the way, you might, well, no, I'm not gonna, bring that home. It doesn't matter if you understood what the problem was and that's great. And if not, it's not a big deal, but the important part is I solved it. So this one is now done to show a highlight on the skills thing, make it so that new skills unlock beyond level five or so. Okay. Yeah. This is a balanced thing. I guess we could do it now, but I just don't think it's worth doing now. So let's put this somewhere else. Where's balance. All right. Got it. All right, so delete this one from here. I don't care about doing that here. All right, next. Show when the class passives proc in battle via text. Maybe you have a special color for it proccing. Yeah, this is a polish thing. We're not doing this either. Not yet, at least. There's more important gameplay stuff I need to do before I get to that. I want to do this stuff eventually. And then when it comes to making the final game, it's like these are non-negotiable. We just have to do all of them. There we go. All right, next, maybe indicate when a cooldown bar will lead to it. No, we're not doing this either. That's another polish thing. Yeah, a lot of these are good ideas and I'm just, I'm not gonna do them because we, I wanna release this on Friday. And if we don't get the important stuff done, then we'll have a lot of like <laughs> polish on random spots of the game, but I'll be like, oh yeah, now imagine that the game is balanced. All right, when you don't have an ability ready, we re reset your cooldown. I meant, it's meant to say a little. And that's what caused the bar to jitter at the end. Yeah, so this is another polish thing, I think. The last one I really should ignore. And it's a, the character gets a tiny bit shorter when you select it. <laughs> it's, it's very subtle. Where is the character? There it is. Yeah, so if I make a new character here. All right, so see when I click it, it gets like one pixel thinner. And I think I know why that's happening and I need to fix it. I think it's fine if you do really basic sprites for testing. I think Nintendo literally made a version of Breath of the Wild to test all the elemental mechanics. Yeah, I, I think it's fine too. I think it also depends on the game. So uh, like there are some games where 
if you were making breakout, you can just use literally white and black and that's it, two colors. And you can probably have the whole game and you can test everything completely. And yeah, I think there are some games that are maybe more based on artwork that are harder to, to prototype that way. So like Gora Goa, for example, um, this was a game that was like very artwork driven. And this probably would have been harder to prototype without kind of seeing how this plays out. But I don't know. Game loop was super important to having stuff like backgrounds and simple sound effects make you feel more alive. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Schwartz. Using low poly asset pack for prototyping. I like low poly. This is just a placeholder. Yeah. Yeah. And same thing. These sprites might be the ones that are in the final game. They might not be. Dozen iterations of every asset. Yeah. Man. That guy is very impressive. Okay, so I think we finished then these miscellaneous tasks that I had, except for the outline, and I feel like we should put this in a polish and not be silly about this. Yeah, there. So now we're done. Okay, close issue. Okay, so next thing was add content. Is this really the most important next thing to do? Make stats do something, allow for leveling up. Make sure abilities have proper tooltips at a region that has a single boss enemy and then balance the game. I guess I should write down what some of this stuff means. So make it so that the first area has battles that don't last for very long. That area on its own should probably get you to level five. Maybe hack the experience points so that it's always a set number of battles e.g. one battle for your first level one for the second two for the next two etc something like that Trying to figure out why drinking isn't increasing the need to go to the toilet, but it works for hunger. You're talking about in the game, right? <laughs> well, sounds like a fun thing to look into. Also, Scotsman, you were in the stream I rated on Friday, right? Oh, I need to think back. Oh, it's all a blur. Yeah, monolith. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, welcome on in using different logic but yeah well some of those things can be fun to figure out and sometimes they can just be super frustrating yeah okay i think i think we're on ad content i think we need to do this and i think it's some of this content is going to be balance related so make stats actually do something so we i added in whoops, like what 15 abilities or something how many are in the game eight some number that's more than just like two and now we got to make them all do something different from what they did. How many do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, eight, eight abilities. And none of them use stats. Stats are completely unused in the game. And that's not a good thing. And the reason why this is so obnoxious for right now is because we need to figure out formulas for this stuff that will make it so that, you know, you can kill the level one enemies with your level one skill, but not kill the level 10 enemies with a level one skill. And exponential growth is the easiest way to accomplish that. But I think you still need to be careful with how that goes. So um, let's think of what a fast path through all of this would be. And what are stats we even have in the game right now? We have power, fortitude. Yeah, so power, fortitude, and life are the big ones. Power is just the amount of damage you'll do. Fortitude is the like lessening the damage you'll take. And life is pretty straightforward. So... Uh, yeah, how do I want this to work? I mean, we could come up with a really simple formula of something like damage equals attacker dot power uh, times some number um, minus some amount of the defender's fortitude times some other number. Turned out to be a really simple logic problem, yeah. I think the hard thing to do in those cases is take a break so that your brain can actually be refreshed and then come back and look at things. 
because you want to solve it. At least that's a problem I was running into over the weekend. It was like, I just needed a break. That was really the problem. But instead I was like, I need to figure out this coding problem. <laughs> Could base it on D&D systems for now. I think D&D systems always use numbers that are kind of in the like one to 30 range. And I think your life just kept going up. Like, I guess there are a couple systems I could think about here. There's a system where your fortitude converts to a damage mitigation percent. Well, your fortitude combined with your level. So like level one, I don't know, 10 fortitude, we'll just say is, you know, 10% less damage. Uh, 15 fortitude could be 20% less damage. And maybe 20 fortitude is, I don't know, 26% less damage or something like that. But then those same values at a higher level could be all just a little bit less. So something like this. Uh, so that's a way of doing this. Another way is just like flat calculations. Um, if the enemy's fortitude is too high, you just don't do damage. I'm not sure. I really do just need something that's good enough, but we're going to end up coding this for eight different abilities. I think I'm doing pretty well considering I've only been doing it for two, three months, learning Unreal and Blender at the same time. Yeah, yeah, I remember you mentioning this. Yeah, it is a ton to learn at once. Yeah. Base stat increases with milestone bonuses. I guess, I guess I should just think about, like, for the prototype, I'm just going to make an executive decision here. We could say, like, the max level could be 50, for example. And so you definitely don't want your level five player just walking in the level 50 zone and killing everything. So I just need these to scale up rapidly enough. And maybe that's what we end up doing here. Like power uh, plus equals something like, I don't know. It honestly could just go up by your level and that in itself would already do this. But something like level times level would make it go up drastically so that at level 50 you'd be getting 2500 power I, mean, I don't really like increases like that i think in general the way i like this is human understandable numbers and so the other thing we could do here is just have your level factor into this your level maybe your level difference factors into the damage taken or dealt so like if your level x and the enemy is two you'll always do power damage or like power minus fortitude damage. Honestly, this isn't too bad. I kind of like this. I think this will lead to human understandable numbers and just the numbers won't be rising as much. That's another thing you kind of want out of RPGs is to feel like you've gained power and not that you've gained relative power. So, you know, at level one, you're doing five damage and at level 100, you're doing 5,000 damage. And you're like, oh, that's more than I did at the beginning. So that's how I know I'm stronger. Adding dice scales really well. Good curve. Add dice each level. Yeah, I mean, adding dice is kind of the same as just adding a, a range of power. Right? If you have 1d4, you're doing 1 to 4 damage. And if you have 2d4, you're doing 2 to 8 damage. So you could kind of just consider your power to be the average of all of these values at any point. And I haven't actually coded damage ranges into the game. I think that's something that should probably be in the prototype. Or sorry, not in the prototype. After the prototype, maybe. Post-prototype changes. Maybe like allow for skills to do ranges of damage. If I didn't already add that in. Yeah. I'm leaning toward this. The level difference factoring into how much damage you take or deal. Now, one of the problems with this is that you might want it to be such that a character got powerful enough to be able to tackle something 10 levels higher than it. But because of this damage scaling thing, you're now preventing them from doing that. 
it's cool to have some ranges, but two to eight feels bad compared to like six to eight. Well, they could have added, they, they could have said, okay, now instead of rolling two D4s, you're rolling a D3 and then adding five to it or something. So now you, you get six to eight. But well, I don't know. Maybe they even do that. I, I haven't played a, a lot of Dungeons and Dragons. Well, your level is definitely going to factor into how much experience you get, which will naturally make it whether you want to fight enemies that are higher than you or not. And I guess there's going to be diminishing returns at some point so that killing an enemy five levels higher than you isn't too different from killing an enemy 50 levels higher than you. It's not like you just infinitely level up from that. Um, okay, well, let's let's think of something like this. What if you did have, what if we just went with the whole power minus uh, fortitude times or divided by two or something like that, or just even, yeah, power minus fortitude. And we just say this has to be the maximum of zero or this. So what would that do for us here? Well, for one, as you level up, if the enemies get more fortitude, they'll just start taking less damage. Yeah, let's just start with this. Yeah, let's figure this out. And and we'll just kind of go from there and see how this ends up working. And the way you could balance this at some point is you could just say uh, you end up getting more and more power every level and the enemy ends up getting more and more fortitude every level. And so let's say the power increase per level we could say one could be like, yeah, one level one to four could be plus one. Level five could be plus two. Yeah, we, we could do something like that where we're just adding a little bit more each level. I, I think that's probably a good idea. And then fortitude would be kind of the same thing, but just on a Maybe we just say like power divided by two. Yeah, something like that. Or power growth, I guess, divided by two. I think this is at least how we can start this out. I'm just going to copy this entire thing into my uh, scratch pad at the bottom of this. Oops, there we go. Okay, so let's go code some of that. We have the slash skill here and we call it deal damage. And that takes in a target and the damage. I guess we also need to take in the source now, or we need to compute the damage knowing what the source and the target will be. But we don't know all of their abilities, and we don't want to put that in here. So yeah, the, the battle should know how to do this, I guess. Will require playtesting for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I guess what we're going to do is we're going to put in your battle character in here. Yeah, so we'll pass it in as source, source, battle character. And then where we call these functions, yep, we're going to pass in. All right, and then over in deal damage. I don't know why it takes so long to switch back to this. Yeah, so source will be the battle character. Now, the source isn't always a character, I guess. You might have a damage over time, and then the source is sort of the ability, but it came from a character. Also, the character might be dead. But I think it's fine. We're going to need to modify a whole lot by doing this, because I, I probably call this function everywhere. <laughs> yeah, we do. All right. Well, let's pass this in everywhere then. Yep, yep, yep. Now, any of these that turn out to be erroneous even after this, we'll just go through and fix up. Because, like, this doesn't have this doesn't have a source here. Yeah. We have a target. No source. All right. Mamba, thanks for resubbing. Welcome back. And yeah, autocomplete with Copilot has been pretty nice. It hasn't been great for GD script. I find it's a lot better for TypeScript, but it's still nice to have something there helping. 
especially when they're super straightforward changes to things like descriptions or names or typing in constants somewhere. Oh boy. All right, extends debuffs. So debuffs track a target. They should also track a source, I guess. Battle character. And where do they take in the target here? Target val. Okay, so source val. Battle character. All right, let's put those here. All right, so then each of these can just use the source. So there's that one. Source, source. And I hope I'm not coding bugs in here because I'm not reading any of this code. <laughs> and then every debuff now needs a change. So this, for example, needs to take in the source character. Yeah. Target val, source val. Yeah. Oh, it's going to be a mess. I don't have too many things that extend from debuff, though. I think I have three of them. Yeah, because I didn't end up, I didn't put too many in the game yet. And this one. All right. So does this build? It should at least build. I'm thinking. Expected seven for. Oh yeah, I forgot to change all the constructions of those. Spreading poison dot. Battle. So this should take in the source, which is the battle character. Good. This should also take in the source. Cool. Now any bleed dot new, which we added in a few different places. So this also battle character. Battle character and any more. Yep, one more. And what is this inside of slash? Okay, so battle character. And then there's one more, which is, I guess, stun.new. Yeah, this doesn't exist in too many different spots. What is this? This is inside of Boulder. Yeah. No, oh, I already did this one. What am I doing? All right, and then does Boulder need to change? No, I don't think so. All right, I think we're good. Could not parse global class bleed. I'm going to restart this whole thing. We're coming up on break time number one, by the way. All right, so what does this think the problems are? Yeah, source is never used. I know that. <laughs> I haven't actually coded that part yet. What is this, though? Cannot parse bleed. This implies bleed has a problem in it. And I can't even go to it. Source value. Yeah, I have two commas. All right, so crush can't be made. Crush ability dot new. What is this thing doing? Crush 42. Oh yeah, so it doesn't have a source. I thought I checked for everything that had constructed a stun. Maybe I didn't. All right, there we go. So now if I get into a battle, let's, uh, let's level up a few times and put a bunch of points in automation. So if I get into a battle, this should all just kind of work. Um, it's not really testing a lot though, I guess, because I don't have any skills that that use some of these special abilities. So let's do that. I guess crush stuns when it kills. I see damage over time working. Hmm. At some point, I probably should code in some kind of time scale thing that'll just let everything run at like a million speed. I think Godot has something like that by default, actually. So I probably could just set it to five. How you move through the world in the prototype, room by room, or just a free roam? It'll just be a free roam for now. Eventually, the way I was kind of picturing it is you need to kill enough enemies in one thing to open up the doors between these regions. And that way you'd have to progress from here into here into here and then you get a choice of up right or down but for the sake of the prototype it'll just be walk all over the place yeah the new rooms do look a lot better for sure <laughs> it at least lets you envision kind of what i had in mind for this all 
and then you'll naturally see the enemy's levels just like you do right now so you'll know that this is like the final zone in the game because you'll see level you know 30 to 40 over here yeah the tile set alone makes it look so much different i know yeah i might have i maybe should have done it sooner i was always kind of picturing something like this or not always but you know pretty early on picturing something where it's like you do have these mini zones in the game and the reason why i think they have to be mini zones is because you will eventually have let's say like 10 different characters and imagine like let's say we'll put this one over here so imagine this where you're like i want to see all the battles playing out at once there are other ways we could solve this problem but at least here you could see all the battles and so i could like pick okay i want poison dagger there fire blast there um yeah Ooh, got lightning zaps. And by the way, this is why I was saying that the battle strategy doesn't matter too much. <laughs> like, when you have 10 battles playing out, you don't care about any of them all that much anymore. You, you just, there'd be too much going on for you to care about them all, I guess. Are they using pathfinding? Oh, no, no, no. Everything is just moving in a random line right now, and they're they're not respecting any boundaries. There are no collisions in the map yet. Yeah, I think I should modify the engine time scale. All right, I'm going to take a break, which means you can all play the April Fool's version of Jump Royale. <laughs> so is it jump time? It's jump time. For those who've never seen this, just type join right now. Uh, the April Fool's editions are that it's a little crazier than normal, and none of the stats are saved because of the zaniness. But yeah, have fun. I'll be back in a little bit.
I happened to get back and saw a dark storm bouncing on a corner. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, well, GG, everyone. Close the game. Let's get back to other game development. Okay, so we got the source character funneled in everywhere. And that means that we can now take both characters into account when we're coming up with how much damage is actually dealt. So this is a little bit weird because like we have a damage value, but the damage value is based on just a random number I basically came up with. So let's see how this should work because I don't need this to be perfect, but I do need to at least figure out what's going on here and, and how I would want to code this in the future. Like slash has base damage set to 10 and then it can know how to level up every level. But I guess skills need to be balanced amongst themselves, sort of. And then your power should be taken in on top of that. So like a base damage of 10, is this, is this like a multiplier? <laughs> is it, I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do with this. It's essentially like a second power value. And it's independent from your power value. Maybe that in itself is already the issue. Maybe all of this should have taken power into account. Any plans to add different weapons? Uh, no, I don't think so. This is kind of what I was saying a bit earlier. Like when you got, let's say, 10 different battles playing out, it doesn't really matter too much how any of those individual battles are going, just as long as on the majority of them you're winning. And you can almost guarantee that you're going to win any of them by just going to a certain zone where the enemies are low enough level that you beat them. So, yeah, if I had things like gear in the game, I think it would add a lot of decisions for no real benefit <laughs> like you'd always just equip whatever is good enough and then you'd be fine and i think that's the core of automated games like this is it just has to be good enough and not be on some time scale that's like longer than your lifespan or long enough to get you bored i guess uh yeah so abilities need need their own damage values uh, right now, they're arbitrary. I could treat them like a second power value, like I just mentioned. Or I could always... Hmm, what if... Okay, random idea. Just thinking out loud here. What if I always put them on a scale of 1 to 100? So like the strongest an ability could ever be is generating a 100 from this function. And I don't know how that would work. <laughs> so I'm not inclined to want to do that. Uh, okay, so yeah, that's... So option number one, treat ability damage like it's just another power value. Option number two could be to apply power when generating the ability damage. I feel like that's good, but the only way to do this is still to have these base damages and everything in there. I don't know if this is even different from option number one. I'm inclined to go with number two, though, here. Yeah, I'm inclined to go with number two. And we just need to figure out exactly how this impacts things. Would that be hitting randomly like in runescape i don't know i've never played runescape so i don't know what you're talking about but all the targets right now are chosen randomly oh that doesn't have to be the case in the future what's the problem the problem is just figuring out like i have ability damage i have ability damage i have like the source characters Man, i really can't type today uh power value and then i have the target characters, defense value, and uh, problem, figure out how to balance these numbers so that this works. Like, how do I compute how much damage you have here? I guess I could, if I'm adding ability damage, then the ability itself can be more powerful than your, your power level. So I need to somehow scale this based on your power. 
Maybe that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe abilities are multipliers. Okay, yeah. Maybe base ability damage is a multiplier for power. Power value. Yeah, I like that idea. So you could have like a quick weak ability would have like a 0 0.1 modifier. And a strong slow attack could be like a 2.0 modifier. And then it multiplies it by your attack power and then does a whole bunch of other computations, I guess. Yeah, I think that's probably a good idea. Sorry, I meant the damage values. Will the damage values be random? I, I don't, I, I mean, they might be like random within a range, but you should ideally know roughly what that range is going to be. Add all raw values. I get what you're saying. I guess I just don't have it determined. Like we have the slash ability in the game, for example, I don't even know what the tooltip would say, but in a lot of games, it might say something like deals, you know, six to eight damage or something like that. Like, how did we compute this? What's the amount of damage you're actually doing to enemies? And that's kind of what I'm talking about. And I like this idea at least. So I think we have a base damage multiplier and it's multiplied by your power. I, I think that makes sense. Let's, let's start with that, I suppose. So if we were to start with that, I'm just going to copy all of this into here too. Uh, if we were to do that, then we'd have like slash would just be something like a one X multiplier. And you wouldn't know how much damage it does unless you pass in both a level of the ability and a character's power. So essentially it's like, it's, it's like slash power modifier more than it is anything anything else and we take in your power and we compute a damage based on that oh this is going to break all my tooltips isn't it how much does power start at not that it matters 10 yeah everything starts at 10 and how do we form the tooltip for this deals percent d damage taking in a level And that won't be possible anymore. It's taking a power as well. Okay, when do we ever have a tooltip and we don't have a character though? I guess never. Okay, yeah, I guess never. We could even show you the formulas at some point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Quote me if you're cute. I think what you're saying there is it's pretty reasonable. A deal 150% of weapon damage. I think a lot of games, though, do have damage values on your weapons. Like Diablo definitely has that. You'll see a weapon that does something like, you know, 11 to 20 damage. And then this gets factored in with your strength and then all of your skills. And then somehow you end up with, you know, 200 to 250 damage by the end of that. And it's like, okay, I guess you kind of know that this weapon does more than the other one. So it's better. And maybe that's what we'd say in these skills. Like maybe they all have tooltips saying something like, you know, deals 125% of your power as damage. But I'm kind of, I'm solving a couple of problems there. I think how we display this in tooltips is, is not really the issue I should be solving. I think just figuring out how damage works. So yeah, base damage, I think is always going to be a multiplier. And in this case, we'll say that it's, you know, 1.0. So now... This is going to say deals one damage to a single target, but this is like deals one times power damage to a single target. <laughs> kind of stupid. I'm going to need to change that. I think about item rarities. There are no items in the game, so I'm not thinking about item rarities. Did I write anything down about tool tips? This is not the right thing here, I think. Yeah, tool tips. All right, I'm going to write this down in here then. So need to think about how we'll take power into account for tooltips. Maybe we just take in an entire character rather than a level. Or maybe a level and a power stat. Yeah, by the way, the reason for no items is just I don't see them adding anything to the game right now. It becomes another system where in games that you're manually controlling, either the items control how you play, 
you know, maybe you're, you've got a broadsword or something like that versus a bow. And so it's, you know, getting close and attack, maybe one enemy or multiple enemies or stay far away. So it's like, okay, items can control that. And then items can also make you strive for uh, engaging in the loot system. But the loot system is just to make it so that battles are different. And it's like, if I say battles don't matter as much in this game, then no real reason to add that in, I think. Be a good idea to look at damage formulas of a few games and see if anything is aligning with Idol Ascendance. Could give some inspiration. I think so. I generally like to do things in a vacuum and then figure out if it worked or not so that I'm not influenced as much by other games. And I want to at least like kind of try this out, but I do think that's a good idea to do. And so I will, I'll, I'll test this. If it ends up not working, then I guess we'll see where we go from there. So the base damage that we have here, where is this being used now? Yeah, damage equals base damage plus the level times this. So this is going to get multiplied by the user's power. Battle character dot power. Except for it's not in there, right? It's in, wait, where is it? Battle character has character data, which has power, yeah. <clears throat> okay. So now slash should properly do damage. I guess debug attack ability. This is the one that all the enemies have. Debug attack ability. It currently has it set to just deal five damage no matter what. Yeah, so this should have like a... What would I call it in the other one? Base ability multiplier or something? Slash base damage. I guess it should be multiplier. Or slash power scaling. Power scaling. Something like that. Yeah, sure. That. Okay. <laughs> uh, this won't work. And that's the only thing I actually used here. So this needs to be this times source.characterData.power. This goes there. Um, all right, and then we just need to do the same thing for this. What is Dire Slash anyway? It's a bleed effect? Okay, sure, whatever. Uh, dire Slash Power Scaling equals, I don't know, 2.0. Sure, whatever. I'm not balancing it right now. Just needs to be numbers that work there. Okay, now, is it worthwhile to do anything else here? I think it's probably fine. So let's see. It's one times the power. Power is 10. So it's actually going to be equal to what it was before. This one was two damage total. And I have this set to 2.0. So it's actually going to do 20 damage per second. So it's going to be 10 times more powerful than it was before. Let's go try that out. Variable bass has no type. What? Debug attack. Oh, I never finished typing that out. Yeah, whoops. Oh, yeah, I was looking at what I called this. Uh, power scaling. Okay, so var. Well, we'll put this as a constant somewhere. Const power scaling equals 1.0, oh, 0.5 even. And then we just do this times the battle characters, character, data, power. All right, that should work. All right, so if I get in a fight and I only ever click slash, this should just function with this new system. Oh, base damage is not defined. Yeah, this is now going to be slash power scaling, which is not going to make any sense. The tooltips will all be broken. That's okay, though. All right, so let's get into a battle. So the enemy should still do five damage per attack, and you should still do 10 damage per attack. Yes, so all that's working fine. Now let's level up this character a bunch. Oh, which already just gave it more power. Oh, right. How much does it give you per level? Oh, which means you should probably be able to see your stats somewhere, huh? Here it is. Power plus equal one. Okay, so then that means you're going to do... I leveled up 12 times, so you'll do 22 damage per attack now. Okay, good. Which means that if I put points into... Oh, I can't... Darn it. I want to automate this character. <laughs> uh, where do we do this? This, I want to change what this is. Is fully automated. I don't care about this. I care about it in skill tree. Has fully unlocked automation. Let's just set this to true. 
There. Okay. So now you don't need to get that as a skill. But I think the damage over time, damage over time of dire slash is going to be too powerful. So we're going to put two points into there. It says cause the enemy to bleed for two damage per second, but that's now the multiplier. And now I have three levels up 13, 26 per second. It should do 26 damage per second, I guess, which means everything's going to die super bad. 27. I don't know how I calculated that wrong, but yeah, that's very powerful. Honestly, this is pretty close to what the balance should be in the beginning of the game where you're killing enemies super fast. Mm, I just thought of an issue. Every time your character dies, we should probably put him back in the forest. Yeah, we should probably do that. That way you don't get stuck in a battle in a high level zone and you have no way of getting out. What language is this? This is GD script. All right, we got to write that down somewhere. Let's write it in here. It is sort of part of balancing. When one of your characters dies, it should respawn at the top left of the forest so that you don't get stuck in unwinnable fights. Okay, well, I like the idea of the system at least. So now in the battle window, we can take your enemy's fortitude into account. So we have deal damage. Do we not? There it is. Yeah, so the damage now needs to get mitigated a bit. So damage minus equal uh, target. Actually, let's do it this way. Damage equals max zero comma. Actually, the, it's a good question whether this should be zero. Should you do always at least one damage? I don't think so. Damage minus target dot character data dot defense. It's not called defense, it's called fortitude. All right, so now I don't even know how much damage you're going to deal. I guess everyone deals zero <laughs> because your fortitude starts at 10 and your power starts at 10. Yep. <laughs> and the battle will never end unless I click this, which is forced to do more damage. No, it's not. Crush will do more, though, except for it has a chance to miss. It has a big chance to miss. There we go, 40 damage, yeah. All right, well, that's working. Um, we just can't start your fortitude values that high. Some enemies will have a very high fortitude value and then eventually we'll add in elements and that way you'll have like, you know, high physical mitigation, but low frost mitigation or something like that. Uh, where is character data? Yeah, so instead of fortitude starting at 10, let's start it at zero for now and on every level up let's add a bit but not too much so should i guess be a float so i can add in decimal points that's probably stupid yeah so four to two plus equal one i guess we'll just do something like this for now if level percent two equals zero four to two plus equal one so every other level you get one fortitude so this isn't going to scale like crazy just yet which means if I level up my character a bunch of times, actually right off the bat, I should be taking what, four damage? No, still five, why five? Oh, I started at zero, right. So I level up once, now I should be taking four. Yeah, I level up two more times. Now I should be taking three, two more, I should be taking two. Two more, I should be taking one and two more and I'm invincible. Yeah. Yeah, so that's, that's the risk of this system is making yourself too strong, I guess. <laughs> but in this case, I'm level 10 and I'm fighting the level one enemies. So you just shouldn't get any experience from these anyway. So if you're invincible to them, it makes no difference. You, you get no benefit from killing enemies that don't give you experience right now. And that's it, that's our workable system. So now we need to just go modify every single ability. Yeehaw, let's go do it. All right, so we have all of our abilities right here. Let's go into slash again to get what this was. It was called power scaling. Let's save it up here. So boulder power scaling. Now boulder was supposed to be pretty powerful. I guess we can base it all on how much damage it was doing to begin with. And here it said, wait, what is this? Oh, the cooldown. No, no, that's not the damage. Where's the damage? 15. Okay, so this should be like 1.5. 
Yeah, and then we multiply this by the power of the battle character. Yeah. Boulder power scaling times. Actually, having a get power would actually be pretty nice, huh? Yeah, let's go write that in. Get power. Should just know what to do. Yeah. All right. Unsafe method. Nope, that's a lie. <laughs> Uh, what was I going to do? I was going to do this in slash as well. So instead of character data dot power, we're going to just say get power. Yep. Nice. If we're doing that, we might as well add in a get fortitude. I wonder if it just knows by default by me typing this. Yeah, get defense. Except for I'm going to call it fortitude. And then anywhere that we had done this, here and here, yep, that's it. Yeah. All right, cool. So boulder should just be done. Yeah. And then bleed damage is based on what exactly? Damage equals four. Oh. <laughs> Okay, uh, that can't be done. So I guess we'll we'll say const. What is it even called? Shards. Power scaling. Okay, this will be here now. Shards power scaling times that. Duration is fine. Yeah, everything else here is fine. All right, so let's go try out Boulder. So it should do pretty much the exact same amount of damage it was originally doing. It's only on the mage by default, I guess. And it takes forever to cool down. <laughs> I guess we have to fire blast the thing a bunch of times. All right, now we should be able to use boulder next. Good. So now this is going to do 15 damage to everything. Yes. Okay, now let's go level up. Okay, now it should already do more. I'm just, I'm just gonna change the cooldown of this. this. is ridiculous. There. I don't think that's gonna affect the already running game though. But maybe it will. All right, so there we did 19.5 damage because I went up three levels. Three levels would be three more power times 1.5. Yeah, so 4.5 damage. Okay, so that's good. And then let's check the shards damage that it has. So we unlock the mage, we level up a few times, and we press T and get shards. There, okay. So now the damage over time that it does is 5.2. Oh, it's only a chance to apply it. Yeah. Yeah, pretty good. I definitely like this. I think this is going to be a workable system for the prototype at the very least. You do run into some problems at extremes and we're not hitting them because we're level one through five right now, but let's see how this goes. All right. This is the unfortunate part of adding content though, which is that it is a giant slog <laughs> and there's not a lot of cutting through it, I feel. Maybe that's something AI will help with more in the future. So in this case, we want crush power scaling, crush power scaling. Now, the way these are all scaling is linearly, as in your power goes up, then the damage of this ability goes up. We might want scaling curves at some point. And I guess the abilities could all just define that themselves. It's just their tooltips have to change after that. All right, so in this case, Crush did, what, 50 damage? Yeah. So we're going to say that that's like a 5x multiplier. So this is the most powerful ability in the game that we're probably going to have. And then as you level up, it's going to go up by well, like 5 per level. Yeah, sure, fine, whatever. All right, so this times the character's power. Any other damage numbers we have in here? There's a damage multiplier. Oh, this thing's nuts. Yeah, well, we're not balancing yet. <laughs> Very crucial to remember that we're not balancing yet because I'm going to have that temptation every time. All right, so we go click crush. We should do a boatload of damage. Yeah, 75. And that's without even putting any points in anything like this. If I put in an execution, well, it should just kind of kill everything. Execution was a chance to... Oh, if I level up one more time there, that should just wipe out pretty much the whole battle. Yeah. Execution is a chance on kill to make it use crush again. And crush, crush has a chance to miss. 
so it doesn't just automatically chain through the entire fight. <laughs> like there, it just killed eight enemies at once. <laughs> there, it killed everything. Hopefully the level of hockey slips through. Even if it doesn't slip through, the save data is all just going to be plain text JSON. So you could just go modify it yourself, I guess. So if I click save right now and then go back to the title screen and load this in, my character is still level seven. So yeah, should be pretty easy to modify. I don't even mind leaving it in and just having it be behind another hotkey. Like first you press F10 and then you press Q or something like that. That way you don't probably automatically, or sorry, accidentally discover it. As a crush is done, debug attack ability. I think we should probably just get rid of these two. Or if we're going to keep them in the game, then put power scaling in just like we did for the other ones. Yeah, I'm just not going to test these. So this is the same general ability, power scaling times this. Now what we could do eventually is we could put this into active ability or every ability could have its own power scaling and that way, and then maybe even a formula or like an yeah, like a formula. And so this could all just be calculated automatically by the ability, but it's not important for now. All right, so that looks good. And then this also needs to be done. These abilities aren't even used in the game right now. So this is making literally no difference to do this. Cool. And then just search for this again and replace this with get power. Good, done. Next up, Fire Blast. Where are damage numbers? There's one. That's for the damage over time. And then there should be one for the direct damage. Where are you? Eight times that, yeah, okay. Fire Blast Power Scaling. I should just call this Power Scaling everywhere. 0 0.8. And I don't know why I wrote Funk for these. And then this is going to be, what's it called when it burns char? What's dealing the damage over time? Oh, it always deals damage over time? Oh. Huh. And this was one time. Okay, so fine. So damage over time power scaling 0.1. Yeah, sure, fine, whatever. All right, any other numbers in here that I need to replace? Damage multiplier. What happened to that eight that I had? There it is. Yeah, that's not modified yet. Power scaling times. Okay, I think we're good there. All right, lightning zaps is next. Hey, retrospect. Cons power scaling. All right, how much damage do you do? Five. Okay, so 0 0.5 times this dot get power. All right, any other damage values we have in here? I guess we could just search for deal damage. None. All right, then poison dagger. You have a damage value right there. Is that the only one? Let's so just search for damage. Nope, just that. Okay. Power scaling equals 0 0.3. And that's pretty much everything. Skeletons don't have... Skeletons don't even have a level. This is probably a problem. Yeah, that's probably a problem. <laughs> that's a balance problem, though. Let's write that down. Balance the game of it. Make skeletons spawn at your level. Make them gain stats by doing this. Okay, so that doesn't have a problem here, but then this one does. Sweeping arc. How much damage do you do? Eight. So power scaling equals 0 0.8. This times battle character dot get power. 
All right, are we looking good for that? I think so. Yeah. Now, how does something like bleed work? Bleed gets passed in the damage. So everywhere that we have bleed done new, we need to search for. This is taking in damage that was already scaled. Yep, this is scaled and this is scaled. Yeah, okay, cool. And I mean, the only other thing we have is some kind of poison, spreading poison, I think. Spreading poison dot new. And this is taking in scaled damage. Yeah, so now everything is scaled based on your stats. Okay. Uh, I would say it's worth testing. And I guess the easiest way to just kind of fake test this is to do this and then level them all up and then fully automate all of them and just see what happens during the battles. I guess we, yeah. Oh, uh, you know what I could do? I could just level them all up to like 20. It should be obvious for every ability that they use. All right, so Mage. Your Fire Blast did like 46 damage. That looks good. <laughs> now Lightning Zaps did 14.5. That's probably good. And just use Boulder for me. Come on. I already tested that though. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, cool. So you're good. Now what about you? All right, Poison Dagger is doing 8.7. We already tested lightning zaps, I guess, and summon skeleton isn't even affected. So I guess we already fully tested you. Now for you. So that was crushed at 145. That was sweeping arc. Yeah. Yeah, cool. All right. Looks like they're all taking it into account. So yeah, looking good. Now, what is this error that I see here? Parameter source is never used in deal damage. Uh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> oh, man. What was I thinking? It might be needed at some point. So let's just keep it there. I'm not going to unplumb all of that. Now let's look at the changes. Looks good. Looks good. Looks good. This shouldn't be checked in. What is this? Skill tree? Yeah. All right. So let's just not check in skill tree, but check in all the others. Oh yeah, that's right. That was the other thing I was going to do is replace anything that came before power scaling with just power scaling. Yeah. Yeah, like this isn't needed. I guess we could do it this way. That's fine. Yeah, slash power scaling. Just get rid of this. Okay, so now slash power scaling should only exist as a substring of sub uh, dire slash, and that is not true because I have tooltips over here and I'm pressing the wrong key a million times. There we go. Well, let's just make sure that builds again. Yep, we must be good. Cool. And then get rid of all the squigglies by doing this. Okay, looks good. Good, good, good. Good, good. Good. Yep. Yeah, this tooltip is broken. I don't care about that right now. Yeah, I think we're good. Okay, so we want to check in everything other than skill tree. Take stats into account. The formula used is pretty rudimentary but you at least increase in power as you level up yeah i also plumbed a source character through all of the damage dealing functions but i'm not actually using it yet <laughs> All right, so we're done with that. Allow for leveling up the class defining passive abilities. They should all be in the skill tree. You should probably be able to add points every so often. Okay, so there are three class defining passives. They are execute, which is automatically 
uh, kill enemies under X percent life. This is the warrior. I don't know what's going on with my typing. Then there's the mage, which is I didn't I don't even know what I named it. Mental something. <laughs> Did I call it <laughs> mental swiftness? <laughs> Mental swiftness, which is X percent chance on any skill use to reset all cooldowns. And then the Necromancer, forgot the name, and it was X percent chance on kill to summon a skeleton. So these are great. They all have a value in them, and there's no reason why that value can't be increased at some point. But I don't think for the prototype that it's probably super important. Also, all of these skills are things that you would want to have them increase as you level up. Like there's no, this is probably the most powerful effect you could have on your character is the class defining ability. Although that's not probably always true, but mostly true. But yeah, I'm thinking of just skipping this for now. I think it's a good thing to add eventually. Yeah. If we really wanted these to increase for the prototype, I could just make them automatically increase, but then you wouldn't know that they've automatically increased and you can't really track this stuff easily anyway. It's like if you have a 20% chance to do something on kill and it goes up to 25%, like you'd really have to be paying pretty close attention to tell the difference. As in like track 20 battles and then see how many things happen and then level up the skill and track 20 battles and see how many things happen. It's just not yeah it's just not important enough now if you change it from like 25 percent to 50 percent, i think you'd notice a difference but i don't think we'd make such a significant change so what else is on here enemies should spawn with proper stats and proper levels and stat scaling regions should know which levels to spawn and how many enemies should appear within the battle yeah okay so all of this is sort of intertwined with the balance of this stuff. Like the forest region should spawn maybe, you know, like one to three enemies at a time. I think that's reasonable. So how do we want to do this right now? Enemy spawn region tracks the maximum number of enemies and then also exposes a type and the type just controls which classes spawn right now. Excuse me. So what we'd want to do is we want these to point at like enemy bundles, essentially. There's there's a couple different ways we can think about this. And I don't want to get too crazy with this anyway. It could still just be that there's a number for each region and we have how many regions did I put in? Where's the world map? Four, seven. Yeah, I added seven regions. So we could just have all seven be hard coded. I think that's totally fine. And then the kinds of things that can spawn here would be different. Uh, okay, let's test something then. Let's see if we can, where do we use this? Spawn enemy, create enemy overworld character. We just pass in a character class and the character class is used to create an overworld character. And then afterward, we add in character data for all these other ones. So we could have an if statement here that says something like, if it's a slime, add in other slimes. And if it's a spider, add in, you know, orcs or something like that. But I want the enemy spawn region probably to have that logic. Because like, what is this here for exactly? Yeah, this is basically just saying, which sprite do we spawn it with? Not exactly, actually. I guess it's also adding in their character data. Even though it's 50% pretty obvious, yeah. All right, still just debating on how I want to do this. Especially for enemies, create enemy or world character. What do we call into here? Create overworld character. What do you do? You make an overworld character that's blank and you add in character data.
Yeah, it's that second part I don't think I like. I could just create a blank one myself and return it and then have... What else do we end up doing here? Add enemy overworld character. Oh, this has um, target acquisition logic. Yeah. Spawn region. Okay. Sorry, still just debating on how I want to do this. All right, I think I have an idea. I think we're going to just call this Tesseroni for right now. And we're going to put in all the stuff that we had here. What do we even need the character class for? For the blank overworld character? Okay. Yeah, so we're going to do something like this. And then we're going to create a blank overworld character. Actually, you know what? Fine. If I'm just going to change this all, I'm just going to change it all for real. So let's just not even do this stuff. Um, create overworld character will just be create blank. There. And then we just won't add in any character data at all. It'll just be your overworld sprite. And the overworld sprite should ideally reflect the primary character in that battle, but beyond that, nothing. All right, so we want to we want to get rid of this. Okay, not too bad. So we get the overworld character, and then we add in our characters over here. Yeah. Now, how do we get the enemy type that's here? All right. So if I've done this correctly, everything should look exactly how it just looked. <laughs> yeah, there should be no change. Yeah, the slime is in the middle and we have eight spiders around it. And if I go to the rat battle, we should have a rat in the middle and eight spiders around it. Yes, but now here's where we can do the interesting thing. We could say something here like var enemy type two equals, um, let's say a spider. And if enemy type equals, what is it, rat? Yeah, rat that enemy type two is equal to bat. Okay, then we make an enemy type two here. All right, so when you walk into a slime, you get a bunch of spiders around it. And when you walk into a rat, you get a bunch of bats around it. And the only reason I'm doing any of this, so rat should have bats around it. Good. Yep, cool. Already starting to differentiate itself. When you walk into a slime, you get a bunch of spiders around it. Yeah. So that way, the enemy creation logic is mostly encapsulated into the enemy spawn region. And now what we would need to do is start affecting their level and stats and everything. And that's... I want to take another break, but I've got another 10 minutes. We need to know how many levels of spawn and how many enemies should be here in the battle, yeah. Yeah, so the region should determine how many enemies spawn. Hey, the monkey. What is that? Oh, I see. The hair threw me off. So the way I'm kind of thinking about this is like, let's say the, the forest is going to have some, you know, enemy spawn table, and maybe there's a slime overworld sprite. And in that battle, we might spawn like two to four slimes level, I don't know, one to three, something like that. And then maybe we have the rat overworld sprite. And this spawns one rat level three to six. Actually, does it even make sense to show the level? Maybe the overworld levels what defines the levels inside of that? Yeah, 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 yeah. I think that's a good idea. AWS stuff is going down. Is there like an AWS status page that lists all their services? Service health. Yeah. No recent issues. Everything looks green. Although I guess it could have just started. Yeah, so conclusions based the level of the characters on the like the main character. So all levels should be percentages or 
absolute differences. Actually, percentage is a dumb idea, right? Because, wait, levels don't even matter, do they? <laughs> I mean, levels do matter, but yeah, levels do matter. But it's really only the level of the main character that I think we care about. Yeah. So the reason why I think percentages are a bad idea is because of originally I had said there's a level range you can go outside of that you wouldn't get any experience from, but I haven't really coded the proper experience stuff yet. Base absolute then percentage on top. I I don't think I see a need for it right now. I think we can just do it based on the the regular character level. But when we're making new character data, that means we need to give it a level or we need to like level it up for us. I wonder if add character data returns that data. It doesn't need to, and we could just make it return it. Yeah. Yeah, we need that to pass in. A, we need this to pass in a, a level here. And then set your level based on what we actually did. And maybe that would unlock different abilities for you too. Yeah. Okay, well, let's code the foundation for that system. We're not going to get through the whole thing. So in this case, these aren't really even names anymore. They're like enemy bundles. So let's just make a new thing in constants that's like enum enemy packs. Or I guess we make it look like the other ones. So we could have like slime with spiders, for example, <laughs> or something, something like that. And then... And then, yeah, based on the level, we figure out how many of these these things we should have. So we're going to do this as simple as possible. At first, what did I say about the forest? I don't even think I said anything about it. I just think I said that the fight should have no more than three enemies. And what were the things walking around in the forest anyway? I think they were rats and slimes. Not that it matters. I mean, I guess they could just be like rats and bats. <laughs> The old rats and bats. So we could, hit, we could have something like rat and we could have a uh, bat with spiders. Yep. Yeah. I'm fairly new to that. What's a practical application? An enumeration is when you know what values you're going to have up front. So for example, you have, um, I don't know, character classes in a game. You know you could either be the warrior, mage, or archer. So you make an enumeration of those, and that way you know it's got to be one of those values. And this helps with typically when you're doing exhaustive checks for something. So like, hey, I just leveled up. What do I get? Well, if you're the warrior, do this. If you're the mage, do this. And you're like, oh, you haven't covered every class. We know that you have archer in your game too. So struct with static values. It's not even a struct. This is, this is just a set of integers essentially. So like rat will be equal to, I think, zero, and this will be equal to one. So it's just a way of identifying this thing and zero only means something in the context of enemy packs. It means something different in the context of debuff types. So in debuff types, bleed is actually zero here. But that's a general programming concept, enumerations, and they're typically in a lot of languages. Would I expect you can make them equal string? You might be able to. I'm not actually sure about that. You can sometimes just put something in here like this. No, it says they need to be integers. Not all languages require that, though. GDScript does, but yeah. All right, so we're going to keep track of the enemy packs that you have. And in the forest zone, we're going to allow for those. So enemy types is not going to be an array of strings. It's going to be an array of constants.enemy packs. Did I pluralize that? Yeah, I did. All right, could not find enemy packs. That's fine. It'll be there eventually. And then we're going to put in these two things, bat. It's not bat. It's a rat, isn't it? And then bat with spiders. All right, and then down here, I guess let's just code the exact same thing because... I'm not going to spend the time. And then we probably want to do something like var enemy pack info. So we take in, yeah, cool. All right, we want the primary like overworld sprite is going to be rat here, numb enemies one, and then like enemy types, I guess, that we could pick. So this is pretty good. Or maybe min num enemies or enemy range. Num enemies is an array of one to one. 
yeah, this 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 should be a like very well thought out system that lets you pick enemies properly. We're not doing that. <laughs> yeah, in fact, maybe we should just have them be kind of static amounts or code the values into yeah, I think I think we should just hard code all these. Because if we're not gonna if we're not gonna make the well formatted system, then we just need something that works. So let's just get to something that works here. So yeah, when you spawn enemy, we're just gonna have a whole bunch of different ways of doing this. Uh, the one thing we will need, though, is your overworld sprite. I guess that could be here. But even that could be hard-coded, too. But it's just going to be a bunch of dictionary lookups anyway, right? <laughs> oh, and then the levels that we have. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to do this in a smart way, and I think I'm okay with that. Well, that's a shame <laughs> that we're going to do this, right? But fine. So match the enemy type. And the enemy type is now going to be a constants.enemy packs. All right. So in the case that it is rat, enemy packs.rat, uh, sure, sp spawn rat, spawn pack. <laughs> Funny function names. <laughs> And this is bat with spiders. All right, so the zone itself, I mean, we're just gonna we're gonna hard code all this stuff into these spawn functions here. And like I said, this is gonna be a mess, and I don't really care. We just need something that works here. So what are we doing here? We're taking this. I guess we are returning an overworld character. An uh oh function. Oh. <laughs> All right, and then we get the overworld character here. This, this. Okay, so in any case, we're creating this with doing something like this creating this with rat. Then we're adding character data to it, which I guess is also rat. <laughs> then we are adding any other characters that might be in there. So in this case, it's it's just a rat. Yeah. And in the case of spawn bat, it's actually bat with spiders. So that's where we copy this in. So this is a bat, and then we add in some number of spiders, and then delete this and put in two, let's say. Okay, then we just return this. All right, now what's the problem here? Yeah, no, no problem. I think we just need to reload this. So we got this working. We should see just rats and bats in actually every single zone because I just put them in every zone. Enemy packs not declared in current scope. What I call this? Enemy packs. Oh, I probably didn't put it as a constant somewhere. Yeah, these. Constants. Overworld character not declared in current scope. That's line. I didn't even see what line. Line 55. Oh, yeah. Oh, this never even added the data in. This wouldn't have worked. Now string and enemy packs on line 73. Yeah, this doesn't need to be a string. We can drag this. All right, how are we doing now? All right, cool. So the bats should have two spiders with them, right? Yes. And the rats should just be a rat. Yeah, cool. All right, so this is the foundation of the system that we're going to do, where each zone knows what it can spawn and it knows what level ranges or whatever. 
And then eventually we can genericize the system when we're past the prototype. But this will let us make all of the different zones when I come back from my break. So I will be right back. Is it jump time? It's jump time. Hey, everybody. All right, close the game. Nice. All right. So, yeah, we got to code in all of these different things. Um, the level range of these characters is something I should determine, and I need to use these when I spawn the characters. So I guess when we make a new one, we could pass in the level, level int equals one. Parameters never used. I guess level val. That way I can just do this. Uh, actually, this won't work. <laughs> we need to do this, I think. We need to say for i in range level val. And then level you up. Yeah, level up. So if your level is one, this is actually going to level you up an extra time. I guess this should be level val minus one. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, it, it is its own branch. What happened to everybody, by the way? That's like the fewest number of players we had in a long time. I'm boring everyone to death. <laughs> Alright, so this should level you up to the level that you make the character data with. So let's test this out in enemy spawn region. Let's go make it so the level or enemies are much, much higher level. So let's make the rat enemy level 10 and see what happens. Why did I say too many? I just added that in. I don't think that should be too many. Yeah, it isn't. Okay, so yeah, the rats are now level 10. It shows up. And now when I try to do damage to them, they should take less. Yeah, they're doing 9.5 to me instead of 5. And instead of taking 10 damage, they're taking 5 damage. Oh, and they have a ton more life as well. I mean, I could win this fight by just using Crush repeatedly. The ability is overpowered. And it suffers less from damage mitigation. Yay, I win. I was wondering that too. Yeah, I mean, I definitely don't like adding content to a game, and that's what I feel like I'm doing. Yeah, unfortunately, the win, if you won it, Jump Royale, it doesn't count today <laughs> because it's April Fools. And we have all these zany things going on, but it will count as of Wednesday when I'm back to streaming with regular Jump Royale. All right, well, whatever. We've learned that this works. So yeah, I think the forest area can have characters that spawn at level like one to three, maybe. And maybe we should put in a level range here. I do want to parameterize all this stuff because it's going to be a giant pain otherwise. Yeah, I do. Oh, man. I guess I, I'm not going to worry about it for now. All right, const level range array of what number int A equals one comma three. That's probably fine. Actually, is it? I think everything should probably be like level level one in the forest, no matter what. And you just kill them faster and faster. Yeah. So we'll we'll do this, I guess. And we don't even need the range. But then why would you fight bats and spiders <laughs> if you know that they're going to spawn three characters? I guess you should get more experience from it. I probably even wrote this down in the design document. Experience. Bonus based on how many enemies you fight. Yeah, you get some some extra benefit. Uh, okay, there's kind of a problem though, which is that if there aren't multiple characters in each fight in the beginning, then you won't learn how your area of effect stuff works. Like the mage starts with lightning zaps and boulder, and those damage many enemies or all enemies. So maybe the rat character has a chance of spawning with another rat? I don't know. Yeah, all right, I'll do that. Fine. Um... I want to do this then var num extra rats equals percent three and then for i in range we'll add in another rat just cut them in half and yeah well the balance hasn't been done yet so i'm just trying to figure out the numbers and the numbers now are going to be based on yeah, how many uh, how many area of effect abilities are at the beginning? I think a bat and two spiders. I think we could potentially add in a fourth one. Num spiders. GD script generate random number in range. I know this isn't hard to do myself. I just want to know if there's a function for it. Wasn't there like a rand range or something like that? Rand i underscore range, yeah. There. Rand i range. All right, and what is this inclusive? 
turns a random sign integer inclusive. Yeah. Okay, so we want to generate from two to three spiders. Cool. And over here, let's make this a little easier to understand. I, it was originally zero to two, but I'm kind of thinking it should be one to two. Or no, you know what? No, maybe, maybe it should be zero to two. Yeah. Okay. Hey, Physitronic. All right, so let's go take a look at this. Now just getting into battles in the forest, the rats can spawn up to, how many did I say? Up to three. And part of the reason for that is like, okay, we could do sweeping arc and hit all three at once. So those are the rats. And then the bats can spawn up to four enemies. Yeah, and in this case, we did spawn four. Okay. Yeah, I'm happy with that. They're all level one. I think that's fine. Yeah. All right, so now let's go figure out what we should spawn in this next region. And we have a lot of different character sprites. Download, Oryx, Preview, yeah, here. So here's everything. So we can add in some other characters like this, you know, Earth-looking golem thing and a wild tree. <laughs> okay. Yeah, let's add in some of them. Unfortunately, getting the numbers of their sprites is not easy to do. Yeah. Maybe increase variety of enemies later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I definitely would want to do that. All right. Where is the tree thing? Also, can I increase the size of this at all? Yeah, there's got to be a better way of doing this. I wonder if these are laid out the same way they are over here and I could just get them by their numbers. Where'd the mock-up go? Whatever that was. Can I just open this in the browser and not have this like constantly closed? There. Okay. Now, do these numbers correspond to whatever we see in here? So is the very first, is the warrior like number one or something? You can see where number one is. Here. Yes, you are. Okay, cool. So that kind of helps. I guess I would just take a picture of this. We can probably compute what all these are. Yeah. Okay, so what do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. No, no, select the text. <laughs> there we go. All right, now we need a font size that puts these in the right spots. Or like generally the right spots. Oh my God, this is a mess. All right, whatever, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this differently. Whoops. We're going to undo that whole thing, delete you. Yeah, and just draw in. I think it'll be a lot easier. Uh, how am I? Yeah, good, cool. All right, so one, two, three, four, five. Now I want to increase the canvas size of this. Canvas size. All right, so 2,500 by 1,600. Center it. Cool. Why is it not doing it all? <laughs> no. Where's the um, undo window? Uh, I don't know how to find that. It's probably in here and I just can't even see it. Undo history. There it is. Yeah, I want the resize to still work. Okay, so five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I can't draw in there because right, it's not selected. What is going on? Do I need to expand the image to the... Huh. 
huh? I think I need to scale the layer up. Yeah, not that, the opposite of that. Layer to image size. There we go. All right, so this is 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Okay. So does that match what we have over here? So is 18 that paladin looking character? These aren't even arranged in a way that I could quickly look through. Yes, it is. Okay, so then <laughs> we have uh, 19. Yeah, 119. Okay, yeah. So then 37, uh, 55, 73, 91, 109. All right, so where's the tree thing? It was right here. So it should be 91 plus, so it should be 107. Is that correct? Does my does my legend work or no? No. <laughs> Alright, I don't know. This is a dumb way of trying to come up with things. Yeah, taxes suck. I might have just added wrong. And it, oh wait, let's check by seeing if number 19 lines up. Because if it doesn't, then there's some other issue here, right? Yeah, 19 doesn't line up. Oh, because they're doubled. Oh my god. There are two frames per thing. So these numbers on the side were wrong. This needs to be, I think, 30. How that work? 37? Is that right? Yeah, 37. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So we just had 36 for each of these. So this is 109. Let's make sure that that's correct before I move on. I wonder if they made a sheet for this. They probably did. Not a sprite sheet, a creature key, this thing. Yeah. Can I open this? This is not very helpful, but I, I guess it could work. Yeah, we just need to delete these blank spaces. There. Okay, so now if I search for the tree thing, it's 107. So we need to multiply that by 2. We get 214, and is that correct? No, it's 215. Because, no, why does that make sense? Let's try with one other thing. Flame, 197. So we would need to multiply by 2. So we get um, 394 and then subtract 1. So it's 393. No, add 1. So multiply by 2, add 1. I don't know why the add 1 comes into play. Unless I have a blank line somewhere, and I don't. One of these things is probably missing. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> Whatever. It doesn't matter. As long as we got something close enough, I think we're probably fine. So, yeah. So I wanted the tree. So it's 107. So I'll multiply by 2, 214, add 1, 215. That's what we said it was. Or am I wrong about this again? Yeah, and then add 18 to get to the next sprite. So we look at 233, no, subtract 18. Good God, this is stupid. Yeah, 197. <laughs> so times two plus one to get one frame, then minus 18 for the other frame. All right, <laughs> maybe we should just put all of these into the game then so that I don't have to pick and choose. Yeah. That's probably good, but this would have to work on all of these and it doesn't actually, right? Like the first row is wrong because the knight times two plus one would put us at three. Why is this off? I don't understand that though. 
broke thing. 1890. Yeah, I don't understand that. And then bandit times two plus one would be 39. But that's not correct. No, there must be something off about this. Yeah. It should be times two minus one. And one of these must be doubled up or something. Was there a problem with that here? I don't know. Did I recently start this? Yeah, two weeks ago. And I want to launch the prototype on Friday. I'm, I'm not sure how to tell quickly which one of these is messed up. So I guess let's just look through and see if we see anything wrong really fast. So we know everything's fine up until here. This is considered the bandit. So then the next row would be another 18. Bandit again. Oh, what? I don't. I think both of these are called bandits. Oh, darn it. I thought these could be unique. They're not unique. Okay, well, that sucks. <laughs> yeah. So where's purple slime 109? I don't know how we figure out what's messed up here. Hey, type safe UI. I still have Microsoft. I was at Google for three years and then I, I quit. So I've been back to streaming for four years now, or four months, excuse me. Welcome back. We've been making a game. The game should be launched in prototype form on Friday. Um, yeah, I'm not sure what's wrong. I don't know why this doesn't just work for everything. I can't figure out what it would be. Because I want to just put all these directly into the game. Uh, let me go take a look at something really fast. I think I use these graphics for Ophog, and I think that means that there should be some directory here somewhere I, I made. Source, I don't know how I'm going to find this. Maybe just search for slime. Reversed creature key. Why did I reverse this? <laughs> Why would I do this? <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, graphic index constants. All right, well, this is everything, right? Wow. All right, so I guess we copy this in. For char 24, all indices specify the first frame. Names of the key should match create key, which orcs provided as much as possible. All right, I'm going to copy all this in, and we're just going to kind of see what happens here. Although I don't understand, this this can't be correct, right? Because this first thing isn't, isn't the paladin. It's the warrior. And yeah, this works backwards. Yeah. I, I, I don't know. I This is such a waste of time. Like a total waste of time. Whatever. Let's, let's just add them in. And whatever ends up being wrong is just wrong. And we'll figure this out. Giant waste of time. Okay. Such a... Such a tremendous waste of time. Where are the where are the characters? Didn't I add in some sprites thing somewhere? If I search for slime, we should yeah, here it is. Character sprite.gd, that's where it is. Okay, so there was just some giant inline frames thing here. Alright, well what we should change this to is just frame indices. Frame indices is an array of, yeah, because it has to be strings because there's padding on them. And then instead of all this nonsense, let's just copy one of these. We're going to cut this out. 
from everywhere. There. Then we're going to take the frame indices. Yep. And we're going to add in load F as texture. So F is now going to have this combined into it. There. All right. So the game should look exactly the same. I haven't really made any change. We should see the exact same sprites we saw. Yep. Everything looks fine, right? We have the same characters. Yeah. All that's good. The whole point was to be able to add in the new frames. And I just, I just find this painful. So I'd like to just copy paste all of these in. I guess if we're going to do this, let's just make this a dictionary somewhere, huh? Yeah. Var sprite indices. Okay, so all of these closing ones need commas after them. All the colons need to show up. We need these to be in dictionaries or I only have them point to the indices. I think I'd rather have them be in dictionaries. So yeah, let's do that. There we go. Then make this be a string, colon, this, and then join, join, join. All right, and there's everything. And the only one that messed up was this one somehow. Who knows why? <laughs> oh, yeah, and then just put uh, commas on all these. All right, now we pull these from sprite indices over here in character sprite. So we just delete this entire thing, I guess. Frame indices. Array of strings equals constants dot this character type dot frame indices. Actually, we, we start with this, just the character info, I guess. This will be a dictionary. Char info dictionary equals that. If it's null, then we, I guess we just assert that it's not null, char info not equal to null. And then get the indices from there and then delete this entire thing. Cool. Yeah. So again, we should have exactly the same thing. Can I convert array to array string? Oh yeah, that doesn't know. For F string in this, and it might complain about this. It's not, thankfully. Yeah, so everything's still working. Cool, great, yep. So, ooh, what happened with all these areas here? I don't know when that happened. Yeah, weird. They're all sharing the same rectangle, so it's working just fine. There, and they're back to normal. Um, yeah, I want to be able to just take this creature key and use this, but the names aren't unique, and I hit that problem eventually anyway. Well, let's put them all in. I think maybe where the issue comes in is like all of these it, I have how many lines selected? Okay. It doesn't tell me there, but uh, 17. And then here there's a giant block and I have 35 selected. So yeah, I don't know how that's possible. It feels like something's missing from this block, but then there's another large block here. 
and then they're split up again. I added Transformers to my to-do list. What? <laughs> Are we creating a dictionary of moms? Yeah, but I feel like one's missing. And I don't know how that's possible. I have I have them all on this list. We have 198. How many sprites should we have? We have 18 by 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Yeah, 198. We should have 198. All right, I don't know. I guess we just need unique names. Yeah, fine. All right, so how do we form this in the right way? We need to do something like this. And we need it to be based on line number. There's a way to do this. It's like a clever way to do this. Uh, hang on a second. VS, VS Code Eval has a way of doing this. This one right here. And I think it was like a previous thing. Yeah, use previous to get the value of the previously evaluated expression. So we do one, or wait, no, how do we do this? We do zero and then one plus previous. And we just make 198 of these lines. And I think if we evaluate them all, <laughs> really funny, but I think it should work. Yeah, it should work. <laughs> so this is what we're going to give us line numbers. This is really dumb. <laughs> all right, so we just do that until we have 198 lines, right? Because the other thing had 198. Yep. And so then the question is, do we want do we want to start at zero or one? And I don't actually know the answer to that. I guess let's start at zero because adding one after we're oh, either way, adding one after would be fine. So we select all, split in the cursors, and there's our 198. Now we put those in here. There. How fun. And then we convert it into this format. And then just forget about the duplicates, I guess. All right, so now we start with, we search for lines starting with slash D. And then set a cursor on every single one of them. And then here's what we do. Like this. Frame indices. Nope, not like that. This. And then this plus. This won't work for a couple reasons. And I already see what's wrong here. This warrior needs to start with one. All right, so we're going to need to add one to all of those. But then the next character, the. Um, the row was 37. Oh, this is so confusing. And what do they call it? A bandit? And we know that the bandit was 37. Yeah. But this is all going to be off by one, so we need to actually say it's 36. But yeah, I think we just add 36 here. Hey, this is completely wrong. <laughs> what I meant to do is add 18. I don't know what I was thinking. Yeah, there. Now we go back to this and add one to all of these. And then we go over to this and add one to all of these. All right, there are all of our dictionaries. Got it. Okay, so now the only problem is that we have duplicate names in all of these, and also maybe that the sprites don't even align, do they? Is the band at 37 now? 19 and 37? Is that even correct? I don't think it's correct. Yeah, it's not correct. It's... Where's 19? And what is 19? No, 19 is a warrior as well. 1, 19. Yeah, so... All of 
the other rows. These all need to have something added to them. Does 37 appear twice in the right column? No. So it should be 37 and 45, right? Or 55, I mean. Where's 55? Yeah. So I th think we just need to change everything from here on down. Okay, so let's just do that. We'll get every single one of these. Why is this not working? Why isn't this working? There. Uh, just delete this entire thing <laughs> and make this the this plus 18. All right, now I think we're probably good. Yeah. Now does 35 repeat itself? It does. No, yeah, so this is wrong. I Yeah, I see what's going on. Is there a command for VS Code extensions or is that a video? I think there's a command, but it just links to the video eventually anyway. And then the video has in its description all the different extensions that I talk about. Um this is I'm doing this super late because I realize now we need to figure out what row these are all in and then compute the sprites based on that. I'm just trying to save myself the trouble of typing in like 198 of these stupid things. But honestly, at this point, it might have been faster to just type them all in. <laughs> oh, it's such a shame. <laughs> I mean, I guess we have all the names. And honestly, I guess we have... Well, if I just undo what we had here, we have all the numbers increasing, right? So I can just fix this the proper way, I guess. Yeah, we should be able to go from a sprite index to both of the, or a, a, a line number to both of the indices of the sprite that we have. So I think we just need to use, we just need to be very careful about what values we're using here. Yeah, I'm gonna try this one more time. Uh, let's not search for a regex. So we're going to delete these things. So now this is the just straight up number that we have going up to 198, right? Yeah. Okay, so how does this work? We need a formula that goes from 1 to 1, I guess. So we need to get the row number. And for that, we do the index divided by like math.floor of the index divided by uh, what? 36? Donald, thanks for resubbing. Good evening. Sounds like the job of Bash or Python script should do. I, all it would be doing is the same thing I should be doing. I just didn't have the right, the right formula for this and I, I think this one should be correct so here's the bandit and this should be given an index of 37 so even this one works you need to do it divided by 18 right but then one would show up in the wrong way so we need to do this minus one or whoops index minus one divided by 18 yeah so that's our thing that we do this gives us the row number and then we add in the index. So this will be the first one that has a number of one. And we need to multiply that by 36 and then add in the index. that by 36 plus index okay i think this is what we're trying to do here and then the other one is that same number but plus 18. okay this <laughs> this has to work <laughs> so let's go try it out we get this number math oops before i mess this up 
All right, so math.floor of this number minus one divided by 18 times 36 plus that number. Okay, so I evaluate all those and now does this look correct? So now we jump right from, where's the bandit? The bandit now has a number of 55. No, that's wrong. That's wrong because of the, the addition part that I did at the end. Yeah. Okay, hold on. We'll, we'll figure this out. Times 36 plus the index in that thing. Oh yeah, this should be this percent uh, 18. No, no, this, you yeah, know, that's correct. Yeah, I think it's right. All right, let's try. So math off floor, this minus one, the times 36 plus that percent 18. Then we just select the whole thing. A val error, unexpected token. That means that one of these cursors is wrong for some reason. happened I don't see anything wrong with this oh, I'm missing a parenthesis no I broke this I broke this completely <laughs> at that floor oh that was supposed to be a divided by sign and yeah I just I just omitted everything oh god all right I'm Probably all of this is indicating I should just stop streaming. <laughs> Let's try one more time and see if I can actually do this and follow the thing that I had written out here. 36 plus index. Percent 18 and index was supposed to actually be the number. Hey, did we do it? Almost. There's just one problem with this. Yeah. But those can just be manually fixed, right? Yeah, I think that's it. Okay. Won't that lead to zero divided by 18? Yeah, so I messed up the, I messed up every 18th character. <laughs> this doesn't work for that. And I, I don't know what I intended to do here. Maybe index percent 19. I mean, we could just try that and see if it fixes it. No, it doesn't fix it. Okay, fine. Yeah. So the most math intensive stuff you did after graduating? No, I've done actual math stuff after graduating. I just, uh, yeah, I don't know why I'm struggling with this so much. But we're just going to manually type in the numbers. So Paladin F should be 18. And every 18 lines or every 18 characters, we should see something drop in number. Yeah, like this. 16, this should presumably just be 72. This should be 108. Actually, am I even correct about that? No, 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 I'm not correct about that. I've, I've messed up every single portion of this that I can mess up. Yeah, these all need to be the multiples of 18. And... In this case, they're just going to be off by one multiple of 18. Yeah. So 54, there should be 90. This should be 126. 162. 198. All right, we're halfway done. I, I'm like, I'm very disappointed in myself. No one should ever be doing any of this. I also think that the creators of these sprites probably should have made this a little bit easier to do. <laughs> there is a sprite sheet, but I can't use that for animated sprites, I think, or at least not dynamically, or maybe not easily and dynamically. Okay, so after all that, we now just need to figure out if we accidentally have any duplicates here. So we have 198 lines. And if I were to remove all the duplicates, we still have 198. Yeah, so we should have every number represented here. 
well, that's not even correct to say. Uh, and so now we just take all of these and we put a comma and then this plus 18. And a closing thing in there. All right, now let's go test this out. So this is going to break because we don't have unique names. And we could get unique names. So we copy all of this into... Oh, and then the other thing we need to keep in mind is we need all the same names we had from before for, for these other characters. I guess we could put them in over here. This isn't even the right thing. Where is the right thing? Yeah, so this should be the warrior. And then I want... Yeah, I want this over here so that I can get these to match up. Oh, and then we need to pad values too. Oh my god. Oh. I'm like very annoyed by this. This one should be called the mage. The first bandit should be called the rogue. The 298 character is already called a necromancer. That's pretty nice. Is 219 called a bat? No, nope, it's called black bat. Do we have just bat somewhere? No, then we're calling this bat. And then rat, we have gray rat and brown rat. Well, you're just rat now. Slime, we have purple slime and green slime. You're just slime. Skeleton, skeleton's correct. Snake, maybe cobra, cobra. You're now snake. And spider, there. We did it. <laughs> We did it. <laughs> okay. So now we just are lacking unique names for some of these things. And maybe Godot doesn't even care. And if it does care, hopefully it just tells us which lines are wrong. But now we should just be able to copy paste this into sprite indices. And if the game looks pretty much exactly the same, then we're great. Hooded human was already used in this dictionary. Yeah, that's the problem with this, right? They're just all called hooded human. We have two of those. What's the difference? Which one even is hooded human? I'm just, I don't care. I'm, I'm not taking the time to do this. We're just gonna call it hooded human two, human M two. Is merchant there twice? Yes. Are you the second one? <laughs> no, you're the first one. It's where there are red underline. <laughs> All right, you all are two there. King, queen, etc. were already used. All right, you also get the two treatment. There, bandit was already used. You are now bandit two. Gnome fighter alt was already used. We did it. They're all in almost. Wait. Scorpion alt. Okay, cool. So the games will look the same. We we did it. That was, you know, maximum struggling. The character is blinking wrong. <laughs> no. No. I know what's doing this. It's because these need to be padded. Do we have a pad left here? One dot pad left. Does that work? No, it does not. Well, we can pad them when we go to use them. Yeah, I think... Actually, wait, we don't even need to pad them, do we? We just need to pad the first, like, 10. We can just manually do that. Yeah, we just manually pad the first 10. That's fine. All right, so we just search for these and just put a zero before them all. Done. Problem solved. Now, is everything animating correctly? Yes, it is. <laughs> Oh, we did it. It only took like 30 minutes. <laughs> oh my god. Game dev. This is game dev. <laughs> Taking over Lena's show. It's just a, a man weeping openly in front of a computer. Saying, why won't you do what I want you to do? I am the April Fool today. Yeah, I reached the goal. And now we can start plugging in new enemies. Ah, the glory. Unfortunately, <laughs> I don't know what any of these characters are by their names. Drow Sorceress. Like, where are you in this? 
I don't know. All right, what was I doing before any of that nonsense? Spawn rat and spawn bat. Oh, yeah. I was getting the zone stuck. I just wanted a tree in. That's where I was. All right. So, yeah, what are some good enemies to have for the next area? So, of all of these, and what does our area look like? Our area looks like this. So we got some rocks, we got a couple of trees. So let's look for rock and tree enemies. What do you call yourselves, golems? Yes, you do. Stone and then mud. And then what's the next one? Flesh. Okay, let's go with mud golem. I think treant is one. Yep, treant. All right, what else should go in that, that woodland area slash mountains? Are there any other stony enemies? Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, I want to put this lizard guy in there. What are you? Lizard. Lizard man warrior. Yeah, sure. You go in there. Uh, maybe a worm thing. Giant worm. What's the other one called? Oh, giant leech. Which one do I want? Probably the worm. The scorpion kind of matches. Got any mountain goats? I don't see goats. And where's the scorpion? There. Yeah, scorpions sound good. Sure. So which scorpion do we want? Giant scorpion or giant scorpion alt or alt 2. Uh, let's just take them all. All right, that's pretty good for the second area. I think that's a lot of enemies anyway. All right, so this is for the next area. All right, so how do we want to put these in now? I want to come up with like... I don't know, three or four different groups, maybe. Yeah. So maybe group one can be uh, lizard men. And maybe we spawn here something like three to seven in total. Group two can be I don't know, a creature grab bag. And it's just got a smattering of everything else. <laughs> Maybe one of these can be like a boss type of thing, like mud golem, just mud golem, one in total. Group three can be uh, treants and worms. And then group four, the last one I want to do is going to be whatever's remaining, the scorpions, I guess. Maybe we just do all three colors. Yeah. Okay. All right, let's go code them all in. <laughs> so stupid. All right, so enemy packs. Lizard men, mud golem, treants and worms, and then scorpions. All right, and we're going to paste these here. Why did that just happen? Oh, because of that. There we go. All right, and then paste them in over here. Now, we need to tell the zone that it's got these things in it. So just duplicate this two more times and paste that in. Good. 
how mean you put those two together. That's their secret. That's what allows them to be so strong. Spawn lizard men. Okay. And then we're going to need this saved somewhere. And then all of these can just be turned into functions that the AI can guess for me. It's not spawn lizard, it's a mud golem, you stupid AI. <laughs> spawn mud golem. Spawn trees and worms. Spawn scorpions. Oh man. All right, let's go code some of this stuff. This is spawn lizard men. And we said we wanted three to seven of these in total. And what are they called in this? Lizard man warrior. All right, we got to customize our levels at some point too. And I said three to seven in total. So we add two to six more. And let's just call this like num extra. All right, that one's done. Spawn mud golem. All right, what are you called? You're called mud golem. Good. And there's just going to be one of these. Good. And then treants and worms. It should. And eh, whatever. Fine. All right, what are you called? Treant, and what's the worm called? Giant worm. All right, so treant. And right, now we're going to randomly add in, I don't know how many characters here. Uh, I don't know, one to three. And we'll just say if rand f is less than 0 0.5, then we add in a treant or a worm, yeah. And this just needs to be a giant one. Cool. And then the final thing is scorpions. It's always going to be all three scorpions. Okay. And what are all the scorpions called? Giant scorpion, scorpion alt, and scorpion alt 2. It's a giant scorpion, scorpion alt. And Scorpion Alt 2. There we go. <clears throat> Alright, nice. Yeah. Yeah, Codex, I, I mentioned this before. This is a prototype. I think it's important to realize that I'm intentionally doing things in what I think is a suboptimal way for the sake of being able to add in some things that Otherwise, it'd be hard to make a new generic system in the same amount of time. So like this stuff took whatever, however long to code, but now we're done with that region. Um, now, let's see here. I should have added in. Yeah, I got this working. Cool. All right. So I think hitting play should work. I don't know why that spawn region just changed again. Something is controlling these sizes then. I'm not sure what's doing that. Because like I re... Oops, let me click that. I, I can't drag this by that point. There we go. I already configured this here. And I don't know why it's not saving that way. Something must be changing it, right? Is it the game? No. Uh, treats. Is this procedurally generated? No, the world is going to be a static world, I think. Enemy spawn region treats. Yeah, tree ends. Uh, okay, so the way we'll test this is by, I guess, just looking over here. So we see the golem. What? <laughs> I don't think I've seen that happen before. For whatever reason, oh, there it goes. Nice. All right, so in here, I think we have a maximum number of character sets. Do we? No, maybe it's the parent. 
that's apparent. Okay, so we just set this to like, oh, not that high. Sure, 94. I just want to make sure we can see all the different characters. Yeah, there's a lizard man. All right, so there's a whole lot of brown in this region. All right, so if we get into a battle with them, they should be what they were supposed to be. Like lizard men should just be a lot of lizard men. I'll just level up my character a bunch. That way we hopefully kill everything in one hit. It's going to be hard to pick out just a lizard man. There we go. Nice. Okay, yeah, good. That's perfect. Now we kill them. And we'll kill them even better by doing this. There we go. Now let's check out the scorpion. Yep, we got all three scorpions. Accidentally click the lizard man. That's fine. I want to get into the golem battle now. It's just a single golem. Yep. And then what's the last one I haven't gotten notified with? I don't know anymore. I think the treans and worms. Let's just hope they move on to me. <laughs> so I'm not going to try to get. Yeah, there, there we go. Okay, cool. Yeah, it's working. All right. We did it. Now, what was I supposed to have in it? Like four characters, I think. Yeah. All right, now every zone that doesn't have enemies in it yet is going to have the rats and bats. So those need to have, those need to be different enemy groups. Um, I don't, I don't have a way of making the characters themselves be different just yet. Because like, as part of the balance, I wanted, I wanted, let's say that Golem to have more defense than the other characters. And, um, whoops. I mean to press that unfortunately every character right now is just the same so this isn't so hard to do we can just have a look up somewhere and have some like stats per level kind of thing uh i think the more annoying part is just figuring out like what makes sense for each zone <laughs> it doesn't even really need to be that important though in fact maybe this is silly what i'm doing like i'm just torn i i could just have slimes in every single zone and they just differ in level and that's it it's probably what we should start with yeah well what's after this should be different map regions i already did this yeah make sure abilities all proper tooltips that's going to be super annoying because i don't even know how i'm going to form one tooltip yeah i i think I think people are used to the damage that's stated not being the damage that's dealt. Like if, if you see a skill that says fireball deals, whatever, 45 damage, and then you use it and it does 37, wouldn't you be like, oh, they just must have some resistance to it or something? I don't know. Anyway, that's the big problem here is, yeah, how do I get across how much damage you're doing? I think that's fine. Must have a shield. Must have a fire extinguisher on themselves. They do care about exact damage. Yeah, that's true. Those are games where every single turn you take matters. I don't think it's going to matter as much as this. In this, I mean. There is a way of doing tool. Oh, sorry. So to be clear, I have tooltips already in the game. I just meant I don't know how I'm going to form the text for them because I don't know how to make it clear what's going on. So like this, it says rapid slash adds a 0% chance, 5% per level to do an extra one to zero slashes. Uh, there's a tiny bug in there and it says one to zero, but like, this is, this is pretty clear. This one, totally fine tooltip. You add points into this and it goes up as you would expect. The only problem I have with this is the color of it. And that's easy enough to fix, but then slash itself, when you hover over this should say something like, here's how much damage this is going to do. And yeah, I don't know. I don't know how to represent that damage. I think I'm just going to represent it as like the amount you you would do if you were fighting an enemy with zero defense. I, yeah, I don't know what else I would do for that. Okay, there was one other problem I saw as I was doing that, which was the skill tree. I just need to bump this to the left a little bit. There we go. Can we build intelligent enemies to stop players? And in just an arbitrary game you mean or in this game because in this game the enemies neither your your player nor the enemy needs to be all that smart 
you show fireball caused 45 minus 8. If there were a text log of what was going on, I think you could do that. But I think showing that with just floating damage numbers would be hard. And the number that gets displayed in the battle will be the actual number. That part's fine. All right, so anyway, there's that. And then what is this? Add a region that only contains a single boss and maybe have, have the label boss kill me to win the game. Yeah, I think it's fine. Okay, and then balance the game. I just want to make sure we're in good shape because I think, I mean, I've been streaming for about three hours. I think I'm going to get going pretty soon. Uh, this is probably fine, probably fine, probably fine. Yeah. Okay, you know what? We're in pretty good shape after these two things are done. I definitely want to add in ability tooltips. I think that'll help. This should also show up in the skill tree. Yes, that's already written down. And then this too. This one's definitely easier. We can put that there. We can put this there. And then I think we're into these two tasks. Yeah, this one and this one. And this I'm not planning on doing. In fact, I should probably just delete this. Close this as like, I don't care. Yeah, update scrapping this for the prototype. It's just not worth it. Close as not planned. Close. Does it bump itself over to the right side? Yes, it does. Nice. <laughs> Did you run time B? <laughs> oh man, can you imagine if that wasn't just an April Fool's joke? I wonder if they actually made it an April Fool's joke or if it's just Hotel Soap trying to fool us. But man, I can't believe Unity did that. And I can't believe how many people left as a result of that. Where am I launching this game? On itch. Itch.io. I think we're in good shape, as I, as I just mentioned. I think like today for me is going to be, well, I'm probably done for today. Tomorrow is going to be the YouTube video that I want to make on the YouTube API itself. Then Wednesday is going to be probably yeah, finishing anything I don't do in my spare time. Thursday is just an extra day. Maybe stream, maybe polish the game. And yeah, Friday will be prototype launch. So yeah, for those who haven't seen, I did some stuff over the weekend. I added in map regions. We've got zooming. Uh, what else did I do? I don't know what else I did over the weekend. But we have all the different... Oh, yeah, I added in this thing. Save game, back to screen, quit, quit the title screen. Um, and you can get all three different characters now. So yeah, we're getting there. Definitely getting there. If I look back at the design document, what are we missing from the design? We're missing a lot of the extra character classes. I haven't even designed them, I guess. We're missing characters kind of roaming around on their own. We're missing the ability to like go between regions, unlock them, or teleport. I don't know if teleporting would even need to be a thing. Player-wide skill trees missing. And elements are missing. Yeah, and then some other kind of minor things like resting after a battle. Hey, Samurai. Well, I got to say, I I think we made decent progress today. I think I got stuck on a couple things that I shouldn't have been stuck on, but all in all, pretty good. I am going to go find someone to raid. I'll be back on Wednesday. Let's see. I always try to find someone I've not already raided, which means I'm not following them. And it hasn't been on for like a very, very long time. And it becomes increasingly hard to do this with every new person that I raid.
So difficult. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, okay, wait. I think this person is... Yeah, okay, I can read this person. Balanir. Read... Balanir. Wait, I lost them. There they are. Yeah, cool. Yeah, thank you all for watching. It was a fun April Fool's in the morning. And yeah, thanks Darkstorm for creating that. The changes to Jump Royale. I'll see you all on Wednesday. I hope you have a great rest of your day. And yeah, take care.